How We Make Movies is brought to you by Microsoft Surface and hosted by the film collective WeMakeMovies.org. You may know him for his lead roles in films such as Clueless and Waitress from the HBO series Six Feet Under, or perhaps from his most recent role as George Altman on the ABC comedy Suburgatory, which he was nominated for a Television Critics' Choice Award last year. His next role is in a tennis comedy called Breakpoint, which he co-wrote and also produces. The film also stars David Walton, J.K. Simmons, Amy Smart, and Chris Parnell. Please welcome Jeremy Sisto. Welcome. You got this Thank whole you. nice couch to yourself. I've got a large couch here. You want to okay. lay down, take a nap? We'll see how deep we get. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> I'll start picking the inner workings of your brain and we'll see how it goes. Good luck. So tell us a little bit about the film, Jeremy. Uh, yes, break point. Well, it's, uh, like you said, a story of two estranged brothers who come together to make a, a run at the open. Um, and, uh, and it's really a story about uh, people who have uh, no family finding family. That's nice. Do you guys want to see a clip from it? Yes. I'm here with the Bryan brothers, Bob and Mike, undeniably the greatest doubles team of all time. Gentlemen, of all the tournaments you've won, do any stand out in particular? Uh, definitely winning the Alarian Open. Well, you guys share not only the trophies, but a lot of other parts of your lives. Is it true that you once shared a bank account? We've shared everything. We lived together for forever. We went to high school together, went to college together. We turned pro on the same date. We got our braces on and off on the same day. So, yeah, it, it's wild how close we are, but it's what makes our, um, our partnership so strong. In the film Pacific Rim, there are these things called Jaegers, which are yeah. giant robots, yeah. and they have to be piloted by a tandem team, yeah. um, one taking the left hand, one taking the right hand. I mean, I think you guys would make great Jaeger pilots. What do you think? Yeah. Have you ever considered doing that? I think we'd be a good, uh, you know, two-headed monster. Come in. You text me code red, and then you don't pick up your phone. What's, what's going on? I have to ask you something. Okay, what? How long you been a substitute teacher? What? I, off and on for seven years. What? Why? What's going on? Seven years? Wow, that's cool. And you're and you're what? You're like a Democrat? I'm a registered independent. What the fuck is going on, Jimmy? What? You're my partner, and I don't even know, you know, what your favorite food is. You know, what's your favorite food? Oh my God. This is your code red emergency. Okay, let's put our cards on the table, dude. Okay? We're not close. Yeah, okay. And we we need to be in tune with each other. We need to know what each other's thinking on the court. If we if we if we want to have a chance in hell. I mean, do you know why the Bryan brothers are the number one team in the world? They fucking love each other. I mean, like, really, a lot. They are in tune. They're in sync. We need to be in sync. The pre qualies are right around the corner. And if, if we want to win there, we're going to have to learn shit about each other. That is our plight. That's what we have to do. So suck it up, bitch. So what kind of music are you into these days? Oh, you still like Pearl Jam? Yeah, yeah good. I See, I, I knew you better than I thought. <laughs> Of all the roles that we talked about before, the many roles that you've played in your life, mm. taking on the role of writer and producer was the first one for you, right? Well, it was the first one where I guess I succeeded in getting the movie <laughs> finished. Um, I, I tried earlier in, in my in my uh, early twenties, mid twenties, again in my late twenties. Um, but I honestly, I, I was always working against myself. I would, I would, uh, I would pick very very dark scripts that didn't have a lot of redemptive qualities or abstract scripts that had uh, audiences that were very slim. And I think I did that because I was actually afraid of not being able to get it done. Um, but uh, uh, I was also very bad at raising money. That concept to me, salesmanship, is not in my blood. I ended up 
a lot of times at clubs looking for rich guys. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, How did which that was work like, out? Yeah. it wasn't good. It wasn't good. I wasn't good at it. I spent a lot of time with people that I really wouldn't have liked to spend time with, <laughs> in hopes to get these movies funded and. Uh, and Did you it, lose a little part of uh, your yeah, soul yes, there? I killed a little side of myself <laughs> yeah. every time. Uh, but um, I, I retired, and, uh, <laughs> and, and it was not until, you know, a few years later, when in between a hiatus, I was, you know, tired of calling my agent and saying, does anyone like me? <laughs> you know, which is kind of what you do. And, and I, I wanted to get proactive again. So... Uh, so yeah, I contacted a buddy of mine who I'd known for years, Gene Hong, and we used to play tennis together, not well, but we played tennis together and we probably spent half the time on the court just talking about movie ideas. And one was was uh, this this idea. And um, and so I called him up and I said, remember that idea we uh, we used to talk about? And he did and, and he thought it was a great idea to, to write a script. So. We hashed out the story and the characters, and and then he wrote a first draft. And he's a very, very talented writer, and very lucky because his voice is largely unheard because he's successful in the television world. But this is the first feature that's been made, and so uh, the first draft was actually quite good. And 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 then there was a requisite period of going out and getting turned down and, and denied, um, and. And then I was sitting at dinner with a friend of mine, Patrick Millingsmith, who owned a professional commercial production company. And I don't usually uh, sell, I try to not mix friendship and, and, and business. Um, Although you did with Gene. Right, your first start. but money, I mean, okay. like, you know, like finding money for a thing. I, mm -hmm. I just feel, I suppose, after my, my, uh, my botched attempts to lure rich men into my lair. <laughs> I, I didn't want to. Uh, I don't want to go back to that that form, formula. So anyway, I was um, I was having dinner with him. I told him about the idea. He asked me. I told him about the idea. He coincidentally was uh, starting a theatrical division uh, from his company, and he you know he read the script and liked it and said, "Let's do it." And so we spent a couple of years developing it with him and uh, one of his directors, very talented guy named Randall Crawlman. And uh, and we spent two years, and a lot of the, a lot of work, a lot of ideas, a lot of things came up in that time, and and the script really, you know, became what it is. How did the but, script change from the beginning to, you know, having them come on board? Right. Well, one thing that I think my impulse to go to Gene was, I knew he had a, um, he's very smart. I knew he had. Uh, an, an eye on making something successful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and whereas I would pick something much darker or go in a direction that would felt more personal, even if it limited the audience, I, I know that he kind of thinks bigger than that. And so, um, but still, by the time it went to, they were called Smuggler, they are called Smuggler Entertainment. By the time it went to them, there was still um, a dark quality to it. There was one thing in particular uh, about their past that was it was very dark and a, a little incongruous with the rest of the the movie which we liked and it took them a long time to convince us that it was not the way to go but not just that I mean so much you know there was so much was changed and many drafts and and ideas and you know we spent time together just hashing it out and that was it was a lot of fun unfortunately it was not just wasn't in the cards for their company at the time to make the movie so had it back on my own again, so then I found another couple of successful producers who uh, really wanted to do it, loved the script, went out, and couldn't get it done. And it was about two months until my next hiatus, and I said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. And this was your third hiatus on Suburgatory. Um, yes, this well, it was last and last year we filmed it, so it was after the second. Yeah, okay. so it was a couple months before then, and I thought it was over. I mean, they weren't getting it done and I was and I was really pretty much letting the whole movie go the idea of making the movie go and how many uh, years in were you at this point that was about four a little over four okay so that's a long time invested to mm -hmm. kind of get to that breaking point of wanting to just give up fortunately I'm used to it <laughs> I, think, I think anyone in this business is <laughs> there's a lot of things that just don't don't get made and that's that's okay but uh, but anyway I but I had two months left and I was determined to find a rich guy. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I was determined to, to get it out into people's hands and, and 
Fortunately, within a few, uh, within a couple of weeks, I had, you know, a handful of people who were interested in, or claimed they were interested in making it. And, and what was different about this time than the other times? Well, I don't know, because I wasn't selling it then before. Ah, I had other producers. Ayo. So I don't know, I don't yeah. know what was, uh, you know, <laughs> Well, with Smuggler, they, I think they, I, I don't know, it wasn't my world because I was very happily not trying to raise money right. for the movie. But here I was like trying to go out. So I was having a lot of meetings. And then I uh, ran into a woman by the name of Lauren McCarthy, who's actually here tonight, today. Are we pretending this is night? It's dark. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and she was, you know, uh, on, on the hunt for, for um, scripts, for, um, Movies, and so she came up to me. She had known me as an actor, actress, as an actor, <laughs> known me as an actress Again, and an going actor. Out looking for rich men. <laughs> I see the theme here. And she uh, she approached me and said, "Do you have any projects?" And I said, "I so happen to." And I gave her the script. She really loved it. Um, and within a very short period of time, I she called me up and asked me to fly to Boston to meet uh, a man who um, would eventually produce the movie, Gabriel Hammond. Um, Gabriel is a really, you know, uh, he was, he's been an angel in my life. He uh, is someone that really made his bones in the finance world by uh, making convictions and sticking with them no matter how unpopular they are. And he read the script, he saw something in it, and he wanted to do it despite the fact that it, it had a lead actor who was not usually opening movies and despite the fact that there had never been a successful tennis movie before. <laughs> and, uh, and, and he's been my partner on the movie ever since, and it really, really has been one of the more satisfying partnerships I've had in my career. That's great. And he's here tonight, too? No. Or today? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, somewhere out there. His brother is here, though. Yeah. Dan is uh, the executive producer of the, of the film, uh, Dan, and he, he is uh, somebody who has um, been similarly very satisfying working with. So what would you call that, I guess, luck? when opportunity and preparation meet? Tons of luck, yeah, tons of luck. I happened to be there when Gabriel was, Gabriel and Dan were deciding to venture out into the, the, the movie world. And when uh, Laura was looking when for Lauren scripts. When Lauren happened to be looking for scripts. Yep. Um, and then uh, the, the luck continues throughout the production process. We you know, soon found uh, Victor Moyes, who is our, was our line producer and producer, uh, one of our producers, and, and he really had, uh, has a great understanding of how movies get made. So he was, you know, vital in, in, in really putting this thing on the screen. And so the fact that he was available, uh, we found uh, a very talented director, Jay Karras. Uh, the most special part of the script, I think, all along, since the beginning, was this young boy role. Um, uh, by the name of Barry. Can you and, describe the role? Um, well, no, it's, you know, he's eccentric, you know, uh, unique, um, uh, probably gets beat up a lot at school. <laughs> um, he's, uh, he's, he is, how do I describe, you know, it's just a very unique, very sincere, earnest, um, but his perspective on the world is just, uh, is, is different enough to be really intriguing. Um, that's not a great description of the role, but it's a, it was a really, always a special uh, part of the project. People, you know, throughout the time I was at Smuggler, that was always our thing. Our, that our, our golden kind of um, thing was this role of Barry. So the fact that someone as, you know, equally interesting and talented, amazing, um, as Joshua Rush, the kid who played him, the fact that he was the right age, you know, that he was available at the time. David Walton, the guy who plays my brother, you know, an avid tennis player, um, uh, a great actor, you know, available. All, all those little things that um, are extremely important, um, you know, were based on luck, I guess. So um, you said that David was already an avid tennis player. Were you before the film started? I played, like I said, I played a lot. I, throughout my life, I played but very poorly. Mm -hmm. And um, I was not a, uh, as a child, I wasn't involved in, in, competitive sports because I moved around a lot and, and I'd play with my friends, but I never learned how to become better at a sport and the dedication it takes. And, um, and so I, I spent, because I always thought this thing was going to be made, next hiatus. So it was three years. I worked really, really hard and spent a lot of money on you know, training and, and it's a super frustrating game because it's just so specific <laughs> and, oof, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. 
<laughs> Just thinking about it makes me nauseous. But, um, Will you but, ever play tennis again after this? <laughs> I, I just played yesterday, and <laughs> I have no heart. I cannot win. It's no matter how much better I am than the person, if I have like three match points, I will blow all of them. You know, this is my own psychology, and this comes down to like not being raised and that quality of like how to, how to win and how to compete. I wonder if that kind of fed into some of your, you know, past productions not working out. Yeah. You know, like there's been a theme here. Yes. You know, like, that, like, I psychologically am a loser. <laughs> That's right, in all parts of my life. That is I correct. mean, you've got the gusto. But... Yeah, yeah. Um, I start out really strong. Um, anyway, um, so that was a big part of, uh, I was scared that I was gonna look like, um, I uh, was not gonna look good at tennis. <laughs> and um, so I worked very hard, and I always thought it was gonna be the next hiatus that I make the movie. So um, in the interim, and, I, and I, got, I got good. I mean, I'm not a professional athlete, but I, I got good enough to, to look like one. And, um, and more than that, I got really in touch with what it means to bust your ass trying to be, get better at a sport, and what that, what that, how that changes the relationship between you and your body, and you know, you get very angry at your body <laughs> because you want your body to do a certain thing, and uh, and anyways, so a lot a lot of that stuff I think um, is in the movie one way or the, one way or another. That's great. Uh, the b big thing though I want to say about Gene and I is also we love sports movies, and we just recognized there wasn't a great sports movie about tennis. What other tennis movies are out there? I feel like there had to be something. Well, there's some. That Wimbledon was one of them. Um, but what we liked, I grew up. Um, uh, without a lot of money. And um, and in order to play tennis well, you have to have a lot of money at a young age, and, and that's that sport. And what's, um, what makes it not a great cinematic sport is because it's kind of bourgeois, it's a very, you know, and uh, so we, I, you know, I really wanted to make the kind of white trash version of tennis. <laughs> kind of like Tin Cup, or, you know, to get to the gritty side, the, you know, Tennis is a weird sport. It has all those manners. You know, you can't. It's the only sport you can't speak out. I guess golf too, but you can't talk. Yeah. I mean, every other sport, you people are screaming and basketball. They're shaking things to try to make you miss. But this sport, you're not allowed to even talk during a point. Um, you know, if you happen to hit the ball and hits a net and goes over, you apologize to the other player. <laughs> like, sorry, I got that point. It's a very like mannered sport. And so we wanted to start with a character that was the opposite of all that. It kind of reminds me of, since you were speaking of golf, um, what was that, Not was it Billy Madison? Billy Madison, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tin Cup was really, in, uh, initially, a real model for yeah. our movie. We, I really like that movie, it's, it's a lot of fun, and it, it does exactly that. It, it, it kind of glorifies the, the, the sport of, of golf more than we glorified it, but um, yeah, a similar, a similar aesthetic. You know, being used to being an actor, you come in, you go out, you know, you have a certain dedication to a movie, but not nearly as intense, I'm sure, as what this process was. Yeah. Um, why did you have to make this movie? Because it took a lot of commitment for you. Well, it was, I mean, I think initially it, it was probably more about just trying to find, you know, to play great roles and being proactive in my acting career because, um, like I said, it's a lot of sitting around waiting for the phone to ring. Um, and it just ha so happened that it developed in a way that, you know, that it stayed personal. I think what's interesting about, sometimes I see these movies now as children, because they go through different phases. I mean, this is, what, five years old, five, over five years old, I think, now. Um, and it's gone through different phases. They've had, it has, it's had different friends, different, you know, uh, enemies, different, uh, uh, you know, phases of its, uh, how it saw itself, and, and, um, and so, I think a lot of times people drop off the project because they're like, and I was almost ready to, but I never felt I never fell out of love with the uh, you know the characters or the story or the possibility of making it. You know, was this film different in that way than the other films that you had tried to produce before? Yeah, probably. You know, a, a lot of those, like I said, were something I thought was really cool when I read it, but I didn't really. You know, the more I got into it, the more it you know the ratio between sort of energy and reward, you know, seemed to be uh, just out of whack. And this one, you know, it always felt like, you know, there's something here that is gonna make it worth it all along. And I, I've doubted 
you know, still to this day, as we finish the movie, doubted it many times, is it worth the amount of energy, <laughs> the heartache, and the, you know, for to make a movie, but, um, you know, I, I think this particular one for me, uh, it, it is justified. That's good, that you don't have to wait much longer. <laughs> it's already justified. <laughs> yeah. Now, and also, this idea was birthed from you. That, and that makes it different, too. You said the other ones were just scripts that you had read and that other people had written. Can you describe your writing partnership with Gene? Well, um, when I went to him, uh, he, he, you know, I, I, had, I have known him since before he had an agent, and um, I was actually a big champion of his first television script, um, that the one that got him on the map. And so Which was? it was not never, it was made, but you wouldn't know it. I don't, oh, okay. I don't think it, um, but that's, that's very basically what you, it was made, but you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it. <laughs> it was, you know, it's, you know, that's how the TV world works. If you write a really good script, it gets you into that world. You know, you are, uh, uh, but, um, the movie world is different. So, so yeah, he asked me if we, if he wanted, if I wanted to write it with them together, or if we just wanted to share a story by credit and he would write it. And I chose the latter, um, partially because I just wanted him to be fully invested. And I was just kind of tired of myself, too. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to, I wanted to say, to stay at, um, at a certain distance from that process. And so he was always the guy at the, the computer. And, and, and he's, he's just very, he's very talented. He has, he has qualities and aesthetics. We both have qualities and aesthetics that, uh, that, that flatter the other one. So we became, I mean, you know, whenever we were dealing with the producers or people trying to help us make it better, um, we, we always knew that when we got on the phone to talk about it or in person that we would have um, slightly different but complementary opinions or ideas on the new take. And so, um, so yeah, that was, you know, I, I think we're actually very different people and I think that's, and you know, I think that's part of it. Um, but uh, but yeah, he was you know he he was he's he's great. He has a lot of a lot of very, he's a very unique voice. And do you guys think you'll work together again? I hope so. Yeah, it was it was definitely um, exciting just to be with him. We throughout the whole shoot, we were like, "Can you believe this, dude?" Because <laughs> you really don't think this things these will happen. They don't. Mostly, they don't happen. <laughs> It almost didn't. Twice. It almost didn't. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. It was. It was definitely fun. But I think we're all just a little <laughs> exhausted. Yeah. Not of each other, but just in general. Of like, <laughs> it's a. It is. It's a challenge lifting this thing up the hill. <laughs> and you also produced it. Can you talk about your role as producer? There's so many different types of producers, and on this film, mm. like many films, you know, there's could be as many as twenty yeah. producers. Totally. Um, I always wonder when I look on IMDb at film credits, mm -hmm. like, who did what? What does that yeah. mean exactly? What was your role like? Well, I was in most scenes, so I, you know, um, so I was able to to so as an actor, you spend, <laughs> let me go back. As an actor, you spend a lot of time trying to please somebody else's aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, you know, or, or their taste. And I'm, I fully respect that everyone has their own taste and mine's no better than anyone else's, it's just mine. But on a project like this, where I spent five years working on it, it was, it was a different thing. I was trying to satisfy myself. And, um, and so that was, that was something that, um, the compromises that I did have to make were, uh, things that were not easy, and uh, and and they they didn't happen without a fight. But um, so I think I think mostly uh, it was um, I was I was able to be around for all of it, which is really cool. I didn't. There was a lot of stuff I didn't really have never been around before. Um, and uh, what was fun was Gabriel um, was new at it too. So we were able to kind of experience it together, and and and. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> that was my stomach. Oh. <laughs> You're hungry. Um, and it's an uh, actress, a, co a computer uh -huh. bot, uh -huh. <laughs> a I am. bot actress I am. <laughs> that plays tennis <laughs> <laughs> and walks around in this body, ladies and gentlemen. That's nice. <laughs> I'm actually small wonder. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you over 35. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few in the room. I don't know how many people over 35 are on the internet, though. Uh -huh. Look it up, kids. <laughs> Look it up. YouTube, right? It's got to be on YouTube. Yes, yes. <clears throat> so, um, but going on about your roles as producer and... Oh, yeah. So, you know, um, it's just about making the movie. 
you know, it's just about making the movie. And what it becomes, I guess, the challenge becomes you gather people who each have their own desire. They're putting their, their sweat and love into it, and they want to make it something that they like. And so you're all trying to fight for something that you each like. And, uh, you know, and so that's, that's kind of on a day-to-day -day level um, that that's what it becomes. But there's just, there's a lot, there's a lot to think of. I was, I was very fortunate in, in it that I had a, a really solid team of producers, Gabriel and Dan, Lauren and Victor, and, and Gene himself, um, and our director, Jay. We had a, we had a team that was, uh, you know, excited to be there. And, and so it was not without its challenges, but, you know, it was, I couldn't have asked for a better experience as a first-time producer. I imagine being at the helm of a ship like this and being at the center of it, and you're the one that was attracting all this, these people to it. There has to be something about your energy that attracts a certain kind of person. And how did you maintain enthusiasm amongst everyone on your team as it went on over such a long period of time? Well, that's the thing. It went over a long period of time, but not not by the time we started gathering people, mm -hmm. you know, it was, we were making it, we were there. So then it's like you jumped in, you know, head first and everyone's just in the trenches and you're just trying to get it done and make the best choices on a day-to-day -day level. And um, and so it's it's not a matter of keep, uh, keeping enthusiasm. It's a matter of uh, just keeping your wits about you when you're really tired and 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 you're sitting and trying to decide between the color of something or the, you know, whatever, uh, something that's kind of small and you kind of want to be like, ah, it doesn't matter, but, <laughs> you know, you want to care very, you do care very much. And so it's more of a matter of just kind of, uh, I think, keeping each other in check, making sure everyone is staying, you know, within their, uh, within the sort of decision making, um, just staying in the right, the right mode, I guess. And, uh, and and just getting and getting through it with the positive energy, you know. I think that's a big thing. Is it can, it's very easy for independent movies that I've been on. A lot of them have splintered uh, director producers. You know, usually two camps, like a number of them. And uh, can you describe that? Why does that happen? I think what happens is because exactly what I'm talking about is like people trying to. They're spending so much energy. They want to make their thing. And yeah, it's very difficult because you have a group and trying to make two different things, and and egos get involved ultimately <laughs> because it's opinion because it's your your taste. So sometimes you you disguise your taste with you know um, you disguise the fact that you're passionate about it. Uh, there's a layer of like protect protection that goes over that, you know, and, and so you end up you end up kind of. Uh, feeling like your friends are not your friends, you know? And, uh, and so, it's, yeah, I've seen it happen a ton of times, and it's always ridiculous, and, and as much as there might be issues with studio movies, and I haven't done one in, in quite a while, there's an umbrella <laughs> where everyone, you, you know, everyone is under this. But with these independent movies, we had Gabriel and Dan, uh, who, you know, were, were sort of at the top of the, the chain, but they were very, you know, open, and, and it, it didn't feel, and I think that's in one way why that the, there wasn't any splintering within the production, but it's, uh, it, you know, it's very easy for it to happen, and I see why. That the, the process is very frustrating on a day-to-day -day level and very fatiguing, and, and so, um, so, that's, so that's the biggest challenge, is to stay positive. Gene was great with that. You know, lot, everyone was great with that. It's its own kind of boot camp in a way, but creative yeah. instead of just military. Um, you know, a, a lot of people, I think, probably solve that problem by not having a different producer and director. They just do everything themselves. Hmm. Did you think about that? Uh, yeah, I, I, I considered it, but it, you know, it would, would have been my first time, and and um, and you know, I mean, I wasn't even sure I could play the role. Really. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I developed this so role for three, confidence. four years, and I was like, what if I get on there and I just don't even know how to play the role? I really thought that, like, and then it. It wasn't a, it wasn't a problem at all. It was I was the easiest part of it. It was you know because I we had written it for me and 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 so uh, but you know so I didn't have the utmost confidence going into the whole thing that I was able to you know do it all. But you know it would have it would have been great. It was difficult at times to not you know to have to compromise my own thing. So you know it, but I, I made the right decision to not do it. Um, and and in order to do it, I would have had to stake that claim early and be like this is my 
And I didn't want to do that because me and Gene had developed this for years and and I kind of didn't want to do that to Gene where I'm like, okay, now it's my vision, <laughs> that kind of stuff. And um, and so, uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm glad I'm glad I I'm glad I didn't. I was curious too because you got the, you know, one of the last chances to work with the late Adrian Shelley mm. on Waitress, who had written and starred and directed yeah. herself. And mm -hmm. I just find I feel it would be such a challenge to direct yourself as an actor. And you already talked about the challenges of playing the role, for God's sake, you know, and just like getting that part done. Mm. Um, I wondered if she had inspired you or that experience had inspired you. Some of the most fulfilling experiences I've had in movies have been with directors who have, you know, uh, written, co-written, or developed the project from its its uh, inception. Conception. <laughs> inception is like a... <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, Catherine Hardwick on Thirteen. Uh, Adrienne Shelley was a big one. She, she just w had a very, very deep relationship with the characters. So there was, <laughs> it was always very easy to, um, to tell if you were off base. She, she, there wasn't a question. You know, I came into that thing, thinking I was playing something completely different, and within literally five minutes, I was like, oh, okay, now I get it. You know, um, <laughs> by not even. Uh, Exactly what she said, but how she said it—it it was just very clear. Um, so, so I do, I do feel it is, it is difficult for, you know, you know, and I, and throughout the time, I did feel, uh, feel for Jay as a director to come on and have to, you know, make it his, make it his thing um, when it had been around that long. I, I know that is, you know, that would be a challenge if I were in that situation. It, I would find it very challenging. Um, but that's not to say that, you know. That's not part of f filmmaking. That's kind of nice. In some ways, there is a, there's a certain delineation that is there for a reason, and um, <laughs> and and so I'm, I'm glad we had the experience we had on this. Did you have a strong communication with him when talking about the characters? And I know it must have been some sort of battle between your vision and him coming in being new. Um, and how did you guys work through that to get to the product that everybody was happy with? I think we. More or less saw eye to eye on most things. You know, there wasn't. It's not always going to be that way, and you know, and so there's compromises. But I think he he understood the script from the very beginning. Um, he had an aesthetic that was uh, that was similar to uh, what we had, and and so you know, communication I don't think was was too difficult. That's great. Uh -huh. We've got a live Twitter feed going, cool. and we've got some questions here from people in our audience. Uh, I've got from at Patrick Duncan asked, um, in the clip we saw the dialogue seemed very spontaneous. Was it scripted through improv? No, it was uh, it was it was fully scripted. Um, but I, you know, what was great about it for me was being able to act like try to satisfy my own um, taste as. You know my taste in acting, and that's, you know, when things feel really spontaneous. <laughs> you know, like it's life, and 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 it's ugly, and it doesn't, you know, it's not clean. You know, and um, a, a lot of on on network TV, the show I'm on now, uh, the aesthetic is very different than that. It's 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 very important to hear the lines, the rhythm of the lines, and it's and that's that's great too. But it's just not my personal, uh, the thing that I love more than anything. And so, um, so yeah, I'm I'm glad you felt it. Uh, was uh, felt spontaneous because I think that's kind of something that you know we were going for the whole time. It's just a sign of good acting. Uh, from from at C Kukihiko, he asked, um, "How much time did it take from concept and inception, <laughs> not conception, until getting Breakpoint greenlit?" So how long was the entire process? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's a little over five years now. And then uh, from Patrick C. Duncan, ask again, are you actively looking for new projects, features, or TV series? Well, I'm still on a show, so I'm not looking for a TV series. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that would be a conflict. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, you know, it did, th this experience did make me want to uh, try my hand at directing, so I'm trying to, what I know now is like, if you want to get something made, you're going to most likely be with it for a long time, so you have to make it sure it's a it's a concept that you can stick by. So, I'm working with some writers and 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 developing sort of projects that uh, ideas that I've had that 
I feel would be a, a, a script that I could stick around with for a, a long period of time. And then still calling my agent and asking if anyone likes me. And, <laughs> and that continues. <laughs> does um, anybody like does anybody, me? Like me? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And so, so I'm, I, I, I like being proactive. You know, it's, I like being proactive in general. I've, I think I've always been like that, whether it's been when I'm not getting work doing little plays, little one man shows, whatever, just trying to, you know, not make, not, I really haven't wanted to make my life be about other people's decisions, so it is, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I've had to, I've, 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 I've endeavored to fool myself into thinking it's not. We have a huge um, actor base in our filmmaking sure. audience as well. Um, what are some of the advice, you know, tips that you can give to mm. our actors about staying busy during those dull times, right, like sure. other than producing a five-year long endeavor? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I would say, um, I, I would think I would say like if you're choosing to, you know, uh, be in the business of storytelling and, you know, character making, um, <laughs> then, or whatever you want to call it, then you should spend your time like observing life and being in your world. And too much, too much ambition can be the enemy of that, of finding your own vision. And I, I didn't know that. Um, so I would, I would can say. Can you give me an example? Yeah. I, I would just say that don't let your ambition override your your personal desire to find what you want to say or even not that specific but just to just being in the world existing and and you know uh it's it's a it's a privilege to 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 have chosen this and commit to it because every encounter you have with somebody is is interesting is special is you know it makes all those things when you're in a different world where you're dealing with money where you're dealing with you know more business oriented things that's not important unless you're talking about trying to sort of manipulate the situation or whatever. And and w with our thing, I think it is really, you know, uh, you know that that's why I, it's, it's really. I think it's a silly thing to do with your life. <laughs> so my first advice is don't. But if, if you're going to do it, though, it's it's pretty great. I think it's a gift to to because I feel like life is pretty complicated and it's got a lot of mysteries that very you know it's very um, it's difficult and and if you can have your work be somehow about that um, you know laughing at it um, uh, observing it whatever I, I would just say that am your ambition um, my ambition in my time in my life has at times wanting to get the job has overrided the fact that I get to be an actor even when I'm not acting I get to be an actor and and sometimes I haven't lived like an actor, I've lived like somebody desperately trying to get jobs. It makes me think of like Orson Welles, you know, at the end, <laughs> the end of his life, it was this interview that's so sad and he's just like, I spent my life looking for money for movies. And just the way he said it was just with this, he was just disappointed. He started out so like in touch with life and he just let this weird business of like trying to f find money and it Com is a weird competition, business. the whole thing. Yeah. Cloud that. And and that that's something that I'm really I'm really trying to <clears throat> figure out. But I think there's, you know, this balancing act between you need money to live and be able to have those experiences and, you know, keep looking for the next job, but at the same time it's not the currency which would with in which we, you know, deal. We deal with mm -hmm. relationships and human connection. So it is a very strange profession. Yep, yep, it is. <laughs> it's, uh, it's weird. I, I think it's just, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I just, uh, it's, that's, that's the bad part of it, is that you're, you're compete as an actor, you're competing, you're saying, how about me for that <laughs> thing? How about me? It's just, we the whole quality is weird, so <clears throat> I think, I think, I mean, don't don't be pretentious about it, <laughs> and you'll be irritating. <laughs> but 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 you know, I think it's okay to just try just try to re remember that you know, being an actor is not, or being in this business <clears throat> is not about the fight to be in this business. Um, that's just something separate. And if you can separate those two things, I, I think it's a it's an easier road. Maybe I don't know.
Well, you've good. been doing it for a very long time. I'm sure you figured <coughs> something out. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really, but uh, you know, I I think that some somewhere in what I said is good advice. I don't know where it is. <laughs> you have to like read between the thoughts, but there's something there. I don't think I figured it figured it out uh, totally. Um, but uh, but yeah, something in there is interesting. I think. <laughs> We've got another one from Ad Ilan O'Connor. Um, O'Connor, she asked, um, expectations for the premiere at South by Southwest. Mm. Uh, what's the golden ticket scenario and what's the backup plan? Well, um, you know, I am kind of a part of that conversation, uh, but, uh, but kind of a, you know, just, you know, in the circle. Um, so uh, it's not really my plan, I would say. And so um, I'm, I'm observing how it's... Uh, it's it's happening, and um, Gabriel and Dan have a very intelligent. They love the movie, you know. They've worked very hard on it, and and they know that um, they know that a movie like this, you know, has various roads it can go down, and um, and they're doing everything, you know, in their power to to make sure it gets, you know, it gets the life that it deserves. Um, it's obviously everyone knows it's very difficult time in film and, you know, the only superhero movies and um, uh, vampire movie, whatever, <laughs> movies are being made. And, Once and... again, you chose the wrong genre. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, you know, they know there's challenges with this, but they've got, um, they've got uh, a lot of um, optimism about it, and, and I, do, I do too. Um, South by Southwest is a, is a really great uh, festival, and it's getting bigger and bigger in the eyes of the industry and the world and and they love the movie and um, and so uh, so so far there's been too many lucky things to occur in regards to the film to um, not be optimistic that it will continue through the release well it sounds like you're very lucky also to have a great relationship with a business partner who's very business-minded and has a clear plan mm. and know, sounds like he knows what he's doing. He does. He's taught me a lot, too, because it's, you know, as an artist, you get invested in a way that sometimes is detrimental. You have to be able to stand back and look at it from different perspectives, and he's great at that. What examples could you give me of some of the things you've learned from him? Uh, well, the editing process was was challenging, as it is for any movie. Um, you're trying to sort of refine the story. and. Um, and I, I would have no reason at that point to know if he would have any um, specific skill in it one way or the other, uh, but he did, and he had a he had something that I found um, uh, that I learned from, which was just the ability to not be precious about anything that you loved, you know, and uh, obviously being around it for so long, there are certain things that are not in the movie that, you know, two years ago myself would be like what, <laughs> but. It's better for the film, and uh, and so, so I, I've I've learned uh, you know about that, and, and kind of just trying to learn how to keep my eyes you know in the future a bit more, not in a bad way. Now you don't live in you want to live in the present, right? Right, because <laughs> right, you're an actor. <laughs> right, you live in the present, but you want to you know just kind of um, not letting the present overwhelm you. you know? Yeah. Uh, we've got one more question from Twitter, and this Twitter follower asks, what are the challenges of producing a project you're also acting in? Um, you know, I think it's more, ch well, as an actor, it's, it's a pretty good gig because you come on late in the process and you leave early. You miss a lot of the really complicated stuff. And then you come on at the end and take credit for everything. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of great. Show you, know? premiere, you look good. You look good, you're like, oh, this is a real passion project. But, uh, <laughs> but so in, in general, it was just, it was not, like I said, acting in this movie was easy for me. I didn't think it was going to be, but it was because, um, because I, I wrote it for myself. So it was not, um, it, that wasn't, uh, 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 but the difficulty was the new level of, of I feel like I've been fighting for, to be involved in this part for so long um, that I was very enthusiastic about being involved in everything. And, um, and it's hard, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of stuff uh, to be involved in. And, and, um, and so I'd say the hardest thing about uh, producing and acting together is just having to produce and be a part <laughs> and make those decisions or help make those decisions. And, um, 
you know, and just when you've developed it for this long, to just sometimes it's hard to stay rigid about something and keep fighting for something. I mean, it's it's not in some ways it's not my nature, in some ways it is, but either way, it's just um, you know, I think that's another thing Gabriel taught me was just about um, compromise, not, not compromises, but just weighing what what you're fighting, what you're fighting for, and and that's I think uh, something that's a little complicated within that. So if you had one takeaway, one message that you would want to impart onto budding filmmakers, mm. other people who are about to go into it for the first time and do everything that you just did for mm -hmm. the first time, what would you want them to know that you wish you would have known before you started this project? <laughs> um, we could be here for a while. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't really have anything for you. So, I mean, uh, good luck. <laughs> yeah, you heard me. Yeah, I, don't know. I, mean, I, I would. I want to give you an answer though. <laughs> I do. Uh, let me just try one more time. Uh, Go into that fembot thing. brain of yours. Scan, scan, scan. scan. Yeah. So the advice I, I, you know, I would get, give is is just try to surround yourself with the best. Best people, um, and um, and the people who uh, seem to have uh, not too much ego about them, I guess. It wasn't great, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much. <laughs> it's not, it's, it was anticlimactic. <laughs> it really was. I don't think I even heard it. It was so loud. <laughs> but, you know, I think that was a theme throughout this entire interview was... Mm you kept getting lucky with the people that were wa walking through the door yep. and attaching them to it. But I think that that does have something to do with what kind of person you are and what you're putting out there, do you know? But, um, so what's next for you? I know you've got your show. Yeah, yeah, I got my <laughs> show and uh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to develop things to direct. So that's kind of something that's pretty um, intriguing now, I'm working with Different writers and and uh, and uh, yeah, I've got a couple of I'm making a very very like movie for nothing, um, found footage movie in the next few weeks with some friends and so I'm I'm continuing being proactive. I just doing a lot of like sculpting and stuff too. I'm trying to not do things with not a lot of people for yeah. a little while <laughs> uh, before I jump back into a, a, a well of that because it was uh, at the end of it I needed some time on my own. Understandable. <laughs> so you you know put yourself out there for that long and then need to recluse for a while. Yeah. Well, congratulations Thank on you so the much. film. If you want to see the film, it is going to be premiering at South by Southwest. So check it out there or keep your eyes peeled. Do you have a website for the film? Coming soon. Coming soon. Coming soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And you can also check out Jeremy on ABC Sub Suburgatory. It's a hard one to say. It is. It's supposed to be. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Give guys. a round of applause for Jeremy Cisco.